This new finish is gonna getcha! Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. In case you're not familiar, all the bass models that you see on Gibson's website occasionally will have custom finishes with specific dealers. For example, Chicago Music Exchange a while back ago, they introduced this awesome 70s-inspired SG that had so many fanciful flavors, and that was just a unique model in general. But if you look on Epiphone's website, at all the current-day offerings of the Les Paul Modern, you will not see Radio Blue Metallic anywhere else but Sweetwater. It's much different than the faded Pelham Blue, Graphite black and sparkling burgundy. Another good example is Guitar Center's Triburst finish on the 60s Les Paul Standard. But no, the one we're talking about today is called Viper Blue Gloss and it belongs to Sweetwater. A little over two years ago, they first came out with this hue on three different acoustic models, a Hummingbird, an SJ200, and a Dove, and they featured awesomely quilty backs. But they're back with a whole new selection of these. We're gonna start with the Les Paul Custom because it's just beautiful. It's a very dark blue finish with chrome hardware and extra quilty tops. Getting quilt tops out of Gibson can occasionally be difficult. They have to have the wood sourced already, and usually it's through custom orders and dealer exclusives, rather than just like a regular production run of things being quilty. But that's what's nice, at launch there were four different ones to choose from. So the first one was pretty much my favorite. It has a really nice, almost flamey quilt to it. It's nice and wide. If you adjust the contrast of the colors, you can kind of see what I'm talking about a bit better. But looking at the back, it appears to just be a dark blue color. They didn't go crazy with a maple neck, despite being called Viper Blue. Sadly, there's no blue Viper on the back of the headstock like on the Rattler Burst. And they're coming in the yellow interior case. The next example, still being a quilt top, it just looks incredibly different. You gotta remember, the color will slightly vary example to example. This one appears to be slightly lighter, and despite still being a quilt top, it has a pretty different look to it. The next serial, very similar, however, it's got a little bit more of a crazier quilt. It almost matches perfectly. This is one of my favorites if you like it really heavy. And then this one. Here's my philosophy. Usually quilt tops do not have tons of movement, but I can tell this one is probably going to move more than the others, so it might not look as photogenic in stock photos, but I think in person you would actually be pretty happy with it. At the time of recording, all four of them have sold now. Personally, I'm interested to see what the next batch looks like, because again, quilt tops, they're all a little bit different. But they are offering these at 7,400, which is a pretty princely markup when the regular ebony one is 5,000. But you gotta remember, custom blue color, so that's probably a 500 to a thousand dollar premium. And getting the quilt top, maybe another 500 there. And it looks like they're going for burst bucker two and three versus the standard 490R, 498T. It doesn't look like they messed with their neck profile, but they are mentioning an ultra lightweight mahogany body, which might just be marketing mumbo jumbo. But since I did happen to capture this, it seems they're all right around nine pounds. I mean, eight pounds, 10 ounces ounces is not too bad for a custom, so there's definitely a little bit of extra premium lumber there. So whether or not it's worth it to you, I guess I'll let you decide, because it's a base model Les Paul custom, it doesn't have historic reissue specs, so you've got your Nashville style bridge. There's no matching headstock or anything, even though that would have been cool, but it just would have made it way too expensive to have a quilty headstock, and it's just our regular ebony fretboard with mother of pearl block inlays. But you're probably saying, hey Trogly, okay, we got new color on a Les Paul custom, slightly lighter weight body. Why does this get its own episode? Well, it's because this is a series. Not only do we have the Custom Shop Les Paul Custom, but we also have Signature ES355 Customs. Now, generally speaking, these higher-end semi-hollow guitars, they're a little bit slower to sell, so at the time of recording, they have three of the initial four that they had. These are all around eight ounces. Let's compare them real quick. This one's more blue, whereas these are coming off a little bit more purple. However, that could just be the lighting, because you can see it's reflecting off our pickup covers a bit different there. And as far as figure tops go, this one's not the best, unfortunately not super quilty, but the back does have some figuring, and the rest is looking the same. This one looks about the same, front and back. And yeah, overall, I think Gibson did Sweetwater a little bit dirty on these. Yeah, they are figured, but they're not the prettiest, but this has to be the best back. And you can see the color differentiation between the maple and the mahogany. That's why the neck looks so much darker. Wow, that's really dark. Still a very classy guitar. Kind of reminds me of the Beale Street Blue Gibson Memphis finish. Surprisingly though, the one that sold is like extra, extra, extra dark. And I would argue has the best top out of all of them. It's just kind of hard to see it. And ooh, yeah, that is a good back. This is a good example that I think is worth paying money for. However, if you call up Sweetwater, maybe they'll give you deals on the other ones. 
The price tag on these, a staggering 8,000. I can kind of see why they have a few of them left, whereas the Les Paul sold out. But again, it just comes down to semi-hollows take longer to sell. And now you might be saying, hey, Trogley, I don't have $8,000. Is there anything affordable? That's another reason why I wanted to feature these, because we actually have six semi-affordable options within Epiphone. And we'll kick things off with this SG Custom. They're gonna be 700 bucks. They're currently still on the way. I just thought it was like a Viper Blue Burst. I didn't even realize this also has the flame top, kind of like an SG Modern. I mean, this particular example, it's not crazily figured by any means, but assuming it's not just a top veneer, this might actually have a maple top to it. And it's an SG Custom. It's not a Modern. So it's like this whole brand new thing. I would actually be really interested in checking one of these out if anybody wants to do a new Guitar Day purchase, because I think this just looks looks phenomenal for an Epiphone offering, but it doesn't look like they upgraded it to Gibson Electronics, but that's okay. These pickups are pretty nice. They're not mentioning a maple top, so maybe it is just a veneer. So that would mean you wouldn't have it along the edge, but maybe they're bursting it to hide that fact a little bit better than some of the inspired by Gibson ones that we documented. And I do not see a mention of a case. But as expensive as some Epiphones have gotten, 700 doesn't seem too bad. To follow that up, if you really love the look of that Gibson Custom, they're also offering the Epiphone version of that, this time only 800 bucks. And it's got the quilt top. Now, most likely we're dealing with veneers here. It'll still have a maple top, but they just put a prettier wood over top of that. I can see these things being a hot seller too. I mean, this looks great for 800 bucks. It's got the newer style Epiphone headstock, but yet a super modern look. As far as our spec goes, everything seems about the same as a regular custom from Epiphone, except for we have a new color offering, which was always my biggest gripe with the Epiphone Les Paul customs, is they were very traditional. You could choose between ebony and white. So I've got to hand it to them. I'm surprised there's not at least a $50 premium to that. But if acoustics are more your thing like the initial batch, they have an Epiphone Master Built Frontier. I'll be honest, don't know a lot about this. I think it's one of Epiphone's higher end acoustic guitars, but it's got these cool inlays. And it features our Viper Blue finish, but I'm curious, how is the back and sides? It looks like it's slightly figured. Then they also have the Big Mac Daddy, the J200. Now this one's getting a little bit more expensive, 1400 But there's nothing wrong with the Epi J200s. I actually documented the prototype a couple of years ago. I picked it up out of the demo shop. It's blue, and it's a jumbo. Ooh, nice, binding on the headstock. And of course, our crown inlays. And they are indeed figuring the back. And we've got our three-piece neck. But a little bit more budget friendly, the J45 is still a solid recording model being offered in blue. I really like this one. It's basic, straight to the point. Go play it, have a good time, and you happen to like the blue finish. But ooh, this one still has the mahogany back. So not all of them are going to have this nice figuring. That's just kind of luck of the draw. But this particular one was pretty nice. But if a semi-hollow is more your style, we do not have an ES355 Epiphone, but we do have the Epi Sheraton. And this one looks really good too with the gold hardware. This just pops it. I appreciate the Gibson offerings having chrome because it does help pop blue finishes, but this just looks so royal and elegant, especially with our weird trapeze tailpiece over here. I'd probably do a new guitar day on one of these too. Sometimes these mini humbuckers can sound exceptionally good. And of course we get our fancy tree of life headstock. Pretty cool wood grain on this one. Same thing is true on the back. But I found their thumbnail for the video introduction of these kind of to be interesting. Epiphones use poly finishes and Gibson uses nitro. Sometimes that can cause variations within the colors between the lineups. I mean, we already saw that the Gibsons had some variations in and of themselves, but these ones almost appear more of like a darkish purple, depending on the example, whereas the Epiphones are more so a very true vibrant blue. So I suppose that's something else you could keep in mind, because remember, if you don't like the Epiphone electronics, you can always gut it and put a Gibson electronics in it. So at the end of the day, I'm glad we have a new color offered on a lot of these models. It it looks better on certain examples than others, but maybe we just need to appreciate it in person. So if you're interested in new guitar dang any of these ones, feel free to let me know. You can find more information on my website, and if not, let me know what your favorite one was, and we will catch you guys tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. Hey wait, what? We haven't made 10 minutes yet, we've got time for one more cool blue Les Paul. So this one was shared over on a Facebook group by Dave. He works at a guitar shop and they just recently got this crazy made to measure custom order custom in. This one, it's a much, much brighter blue hue. And I've got to say, I dig it a lot. It also features the Chrome hardware and is just a regular base model Les Paul custom. Such a cool exotic finish. I would love to have a blue dragon Les Paul very similar to this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this episode, The Red Dragon. But the fun does not necessarily end just on the top of this one, because if you look on the sides, there's a little bit of an extra treat. 
it is a TV white finish back and sides. So we had saw what Sweetwater's offerings show you when you have a dark finish, so sometimes having a contrasting light finish on the back can give you a nice visual difference. And what's also cool about this finish is the dye isn't fully applied everywhere. You can still see some of the original maple color going through here. They also decide to upgrade the electronics with custom bucker pickups, and he also says it has a lightweight body. However, this time it's not 9 pounds, 8.2. That is absolutely insane for a solid body Les Paul custom. If indeed it is still solid. I'm not exactly sure where in the world this one's being offered. Can't quite see the branding of the store, but I'm sure somebody can fill us in in the comment section. But when asked how much it would be, he had responded nearly 10,000 USD. All right, Troglodytes, that is our real ending for tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.